We form part of what is known as the Advocacy and Legal Advice Center. We assist and provide legal advice and other forms of assistance where possible to persons who have been victims or witnesses of corruption. So today we are here with Kamisha Gardner and we're going to talk a little bit about what happened with her when she came to us in 2015. I think it was in um, February 2015 I had approached the NIA. Okay. How did you hear about NIA? It was a core of mine. Um, I was telling her about the situation with the district council ongoing situation and she told me about this organization that she heard about, um, I think it was on the news. She um she looked looked um in I up in the yellow pages and I called and I got Miss Hamilton of course, made an appointment and I came to see her. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the situation that led you to contact NIA in the first place. Okay, well, in two thousand and two I was sent in by the superintendent then at the Clarkson police station. Um she asked that I somebody that is in charge of the station take me to see her and she just sent me home. So I was like wondering if I'm like sent home indefinitely or, or I'm on suspension. I just didn't know what it was. Until like two months after, I was called back to the station and I was served um, a document that says that I am on suspension and the matter is under investigation. That's it. So 2002, um, I went back to the station like a month after two checked on it. They just said it's under investigation. That's it. A year passed, nothing. So I wrote a letter to the Commissioner of Police. I think it was um, um, Lucia Stamas then. And I went to see him. There was no file, there was no document, there was nothing to say that I was on suspension. He had requested a file for me to no avail. Um, some time passed, heard nothing from him. So I wrote to the other Commissioner after he left. I think it was Ray Ardman, Ard Lewin. Still nothing. By then, I think it was three years going on, at the same situation continued. I just kept writing, I just kept checking, nothing. So it was, um, wasn't until I, I got in touch with the NIA that, you know, some, I started to get some form of response or something from them. That's just the situation. Kamisha came to us in 2015. Elak was actually just getting off the ground. So she came and we had a formal meeting and well I spoke with her first on the phone and got all the information, put it together and then she came into office for a formal meeting. She met with myself as well as Mr. Burke who is the legal advisor and we got all the information. She had all her documents together and that was one of the good things with Kamisha. She had her letters, everything was there. So it was very easy to connect the dots. So when we reviewed the matter, we decided that perhaps the first step would be to contact the Commission of Police because we decided that, or we were of the opinion rather, that there was some gross miscarriage of justice in her case. There was no hearing, there was no communication. This had been 13 years later and she was on suspension without getting paid at the time. So through Professor Monroe, we wrote to the Commission of Police and we actually received a response which said that they had received our letter and were giving it some kind of attention. Fast forward to about 2016, one year later, still nothing further, no further contact from the Commission of Police. And so what we did then was, per, was we decided to prepare a formal legal opinion to see whether or not if we took the case forward, there would be any prospects for success. And at the end of that legal opinion, we decided that Kamisha did in fact have a good case and a good chance at success. And from there, we decided that we'd start to look for counsel to represent her in a formal legal action. In July 2016, we contacted Glenroy Mellish of Byfield, Mellish and Rushton in order to seek counsel to represent Kamisha Gardner. Um, at the time, he was very energetic in terms of wanting to take on the matter. And he met with us. He arranged to also meet Kamisha and at that time we were also simultaneously sorting out the documents as it relates to filing a claim on behalf of Kamisha's on Kamisha's Kamisha. behalf 
Uh, we initiated the matter by way of fix a claim form with an affidavit in support. It detailed, the affidavit itself detailed the circumstances which led to Kamisha's dismissal, which was in in our view, unfair. Because one of the things we didn't speak of was the fact that there was a dismissal after the suspension. Yes. So she was suspended. She was sent home first, then suspended. And, at, and, at, then, and then years, years later, later, 12 years later, she yes. was dismissed without any in form of investigation or any information be presented to Kamisha as it relates to the outcome of any investigation. And the dismissal letter took effect as at 2002 when she was suspended. So it was a retroactive dismissal. So because of that and the unfairness and injustice in Kamisha's case, Mr. Mellish was ardent in supporting Kamisha and in representing her. As a result, a uh, trial date was set for today, May 8, 2018. However, the Attorney General did not proceed to trial in this matter, but rather opted to enter into a settlement agreement with Kamisha. Today, after a very long night um, in court, when, when everything started, um, the judge was wondering, she said she had a lot of questions as to why this matter was set for trial. However, Mr. Mellish said, opted by telling her that they're having, they would like an half an hour to discuss something between himself and the Attorney General. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So, to recess for half an hour, they went outside, speak for a bit, and then we came back. NIA is extremely elated to announce that this is a win for us sure. because the matter was decided in favor Fever. of the claimant, our complainants. Kamisha over here. Um, so the orders that were granted today were that the letter that was given to Miss Gardner um, by the Commissioner of Police is now null and void, right? So that dismissal slash suspension is out. Mm -hmm. uh, um, also, that consequently the claimant is entitled to wages and emoluments. and emoluments from the date of suspension, as well as there is cost to be taxed or agree to at a later date. So as I tell you, um, this is a success, you know, on behalf of our complainant over here, Kamisha, as well as for NIA. And we're just really pleased at the outcome because justice has been served. Long but finally long served. Long but finally <laughs> served. So how do you feel, Kamisha, after so long? You've waited the ring around, the run around, mm -hmm. back and forth with the district constable. How do you finally feel after know that all that runner owner has finally paid off. How do I feel? I don't have words, to be honest. I mean, it's almost three hours now since, <laughs> and I'm still, like, I'm in shock. I'm not an extroverted person. I'm really somebody that keeps it in, but I'm having mixed feelings. I'm, like, very happy. I'm, like, very nervous, I want to scream. I want to just be alone so I could cry my eyes out, all of that. But most of all, I'm very, very grateful for NIA, and especially these three ladies that has been giving me great vibes since morning. One makes me want to cry, the other one just, you know, one extreme to the other, I'm laughing and I'm crying this minute. But the good thing about it, they are um, NIA. I must say I'm very, very grateful for them, and if and I, come to them, I don't know what would have happened at this point. I don't know where it would have been. Maybe I would just give up because it has been a long ride, you know? So I probably would have given up a long time ago if it wasn't for NIA, you know? So I'm extremely grateful, like right now, just extremely grateful for them. Any final words, ladies? Um, just to encourage persons that sometimes justice is long in coming, sometimes it seems impossible, but it is still possible, it's possible to achieve justice, and it starts with you. You have to take that first step. And sometimes persons go through situations and they feel nothing can be done, but you won't know until you try. One of the tips that you could take from Kamisha is to 
write letters, keep a paper trail. Don't just show up to the place or call, send something in writing, get a response. And also just do your follow-ups, constantly go, call, write, call, and seek help. NIA is here with ALAC to give you that assistance that you need. Mm -hmm.